Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In the 19th century, Charles Darwin recognized the connection between climate change, extreme weather, and natural selection. In his book, The Origin of Species, Darwin wrote, climate plays an important part in determining the average number of a species, and periodical seasons of extreme cold or drought seem to be most effective of all checks. I estimated, chiefly from the greatly reduced numbers of nests in the spring, that the winter of 1854 to 1855 destroyed four-fifths of the birds in my own grounds. And this is a tremendous destruction when we remember that 10% is an extraordinarily severe mortality from epidemics with man. The action of climate seems at first to be quite independent of the struggle for existence. But insofar as climate chiefly acts in reducing food, it brings on the most severe struggle between the individuals, whether of the same or of distinct species. Even when climate, for instance extreme cold, acts directly, it will be the least vigorous individuals, those who've got the least food through the advancing winter, which will suffer most. Darwin recognized that climate change and extreme weather were an essential part of maintaining healthy populations. And he recognized that cold weather was much more difficult for individuals than warm weather. Darwin was in the Northern Hemisphere, and he wrote, When we travel southward and see a species decreasing in numbers, we may feel sure that the cause lies quite as much in other species being favored as in this one being hurt. So it is when we travel northward, but in a somewhat lesser degree, for the number of species of all kinds, and therefore of competitors, decreases northwards. Hence, in going northwards or in ascending a mountain, we far oftener meet with stunted forms due to directly injurious action of climate. Darwin completely understood that warm weather was good for individuals and cold weather wasn't. Most people who are not climate scientists understand this fairly fundamental fact. This is why people spend their winter vacation in places like the Maldives rather than in Winnipeg. Darwin did not actually invent the term survival of the fittest. That term was coined by Herbert Spencer and later adopted by Darwin. Spencer argued that economics closely paralleled Darwin's evolutionary theory. Spencer believed that a healthy economy depended on competition and survival of the fittest. Spencer's theories explained why socialism doesn't work and invariably lead to government coercion. Fifty years ago, the people of Czechoslovakia wanted freedom from the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. But socialists are unwilling to give up power, and they crushed the rebellion with force. In 1799, President John Adams gave his take on left-wing politics. Adams said, A boy of 15 who is not a Democrat is good for nothing, and he is no better who is a Democrat at 20. John Adams' expectation was that people should grow up by the time they're 20 years old. Obviously, that message did not get through to some people. Progressives claim Darwin is one of their own, but they actually understand very little of what he said. Darwin understood that climate change and extreme weather are natural, they're essential, and that cold is much harder on humans than warmth is. It seems unlikely that Bernie Sanders and people of Zilk will ever understand climate or economics. Competition and survival of the fittest are an essential part of both a healthy environment and a healthy economy. I'll be talking more about Darwin in my next video, but in a totally different context. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.